And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa. We'll be back next week, but Corey Sandin, our other co-host, is right here in the studio. And I'm back with Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. is going to be here talking some great fishing here. This man is knowledgeable about fresh salt, all kinds of stuff, as well as the fabulous AFCO products. Stay tuned. Southern California's Sport Fishing Voices. Let's talk hook up on the mighty 1090. A few years ago, Shimano introduced the Tranks 500 reel, and it changed the way we cast for big fish. Now, by popular demand, Shimano has created two new sizes, introducing the Tranks 300 and 400. Available now at your local Shimano dealer. Tranks is the dream reel for throwing big baits and catching big fish. X-Ship and HEG technologies combine to provide massive cranking power with a smooth, effortless retrieve. Plus, Shimano's new Core Protect water-resistant technology provides long-lasting durability in the harshest environment. The new Tranks 300 and 400 are available in two gear ratios and two different handle designs to cover all fresh and salt water applications. See the new Tranks 300 and 400 at your local Shimano dealer. Tranks, it's not just a new reel, it's a way to fish. Check Shimano.com for all the details. No matter what the season, Rapala Lure should always be a part of your fishing arsenal. It's time to stock up on the trolling lure that's proven to catch more fish. x wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every x wrap mag runs perfect right out of the box. All have extreme action with a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium VMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. Here's some big news. x wrap mags now get up to 40 feet deep with the new X-Mag 40. Spool up with suffix line which was designed and recommended for trolling x wrap mags and you have a deadly combo. You should also check out Rapala Husky Magnum heavy duty high speed trolling lures built for battle large game fish. The Husky Mag lures, like all Rapala lures, are built tough and available at a great price. So bottom line, the x rap Magnum or the Rapala Husky Magnum are the ultimate trolling lures for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the entire lineup at Rapala.com. We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town, or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at BuyFordNow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today. They'll be glad to hook you up. All right. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And excited to have you back, Pete. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Corey, for doing such a great job of covering for myself and Rick. And you guys, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, and I was in Florida. I was down in Marathon key, Keys there in the middle of the Keys and uh, diving, the kind of my week of uh, scuba diving down there and had a fabulous time and uh, saw some amazing things and caught a bunch of lobster and speared a bunch of fish and ate well down there. And it's a very different world down there. Sounds like a good yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, saw a couple of big sharks right in front of us there while we were underneath and big giant turtles and stuff. It's good sights. Sounds like a neat adventure. Yeah, very good adventure. Talk about neat adventures. You know, the the man in the studio here, Greg, Greg Stotesbury, man. He's been talking everything from Sierra Trout to Big Bluefin. Yeah, 
Good morning, Greg. Good morning, guys. Yeah, he, this guy is about as fishy as they get. As fishy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no question about it. He's a he is a fish killing machine there. And you've we were talking about the big bluefin and how incredible the year has been, right? It's been an amazing year. We we had uh, we had so much fun on the boat this year and like I was saying earlier, you know, you kind of think about the ones you didn't get, the ones you lost, the ones you saw at color that got away, but uh, we were we were blessed to catch some really nice fish this year and um, caught uh, some really big fish on some some of the tuna club tackle that we use occasionally. And uh, you know, uh, Dave Pfeiffer, our buddy there from Shimano, oh, yeah. got that got that 219 on 24 thread antique tackle with a wooden rod and the the old uh, J A Cox reel and everything. And That's just crazy. When you how does that, that happen? Yeah, it was a pretty amazing catch. Um, we we were all kind of blown away when he caught the fish, but. Uh, you know that that big fish, the one that he hooked, the one that we got for whatever reason, just did not do the normal, you know, two three hundred yard run and fight for hours and hours. The fish, uh, about forty five minutes into the fight, the fish got wrapped in the leader, and fish started coming. And you know, even wrapped in the leader, you oftentimes can't get them; they'll chafe off or whatever. But the fish just started coming, and next thing you know, it comes up backwards after about ten minutes of pulling, and we reached out and got a gaff in it, and. They've caught the fish of a lifetime on, on the antique tackle. That's incredible. And you're talking antique tackle. You're talking linen line and right. The linen line he was using was uh, was from the 50s, as far from as we can 50s. tell. Yeah, it was 24 thread linen. It tested 60 pounds, which is pretty good for 24 thread. 24 thread is normally about 70 plus pound test. But the cool thing was the the reel that he caught it on was a 1932 J A Cox 90. Uh, with a very limited, it's got a drag about the size of a jig master. Oh, what my. the heck? And the rod was hickory wood, hickory. and it was an original hickory wood rod from probably pre 30s. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. how, how does that? How did that? How do you do that? I mean, that just uh... <laughs> well, you can't do it if you don't fish the tackle. And in, and in the tuna club, which of course we're involved with, you you uh, we have we have all kinds of awards for catching fish on antique gear. And again, the only way you're going to catch one on it is to try and. Typically, you just get destroyed yeah. on the linen. I mean, I, I fished it a bunch of times this year, and I think most of the time I was broke off before I even came tight. Wow. Because um, you never know if the linen's good or bad. or you know, It can be good for the first 100 yards and then terrible for the next five yards and then good for the next 100 yards. I can yeah. only imagine 70-year-old line. I mean, something's going to go wrong. Yeah. You know? Well, this particular line, you know, we actually um, we, we put a bucket on it and let a bunch of line out behind the boat and then very carefully pulled on it to see how much pressure we could put on it. And this spool of line is really good for linen. It's a really good line. Huh. But we just is it just luck, just finding the right spool? It, it, it's a lot of it is Pete, the stuff is just so hard to get. I mean, they haven't made any of it for 50, 60 years. So yeah, it's luck that you find a spool that somewhere down inside it hasn't it hasn't deteriorated or rotted. Because what it does is it rots. Yeah. And the worst thing is if you get blood or slime or anything anything organic on it, it just it it goes away. It's wow. Because yeah. it's natural fiber. It's, it's Unbelievable. flax fiber is what it is. Yeah. On the way back up to the airport in Miami yesterday, we stopped at Worldwide Sportsman, and I had never seen the the um, Hemingway's boat that they have. Oh, yeah, in the there. Pilar. Yeah. Uh, what an amazing thing. And they have a lot of that antique tackle in there. Yeah. And you look at that, and you just think, how did they how did they catch fish on this? Right? Yeah. No, it's yeah, we were we were all so excited and so blown away. We you know we fished this this is in our antique tackle tournament that the tuna club has it's a one-day tournament we fish the same tournament every year and last year we fished it pfeiffer used the same outfit and and uh, baited a swordfish that was probably i don't know 350 pounds and we were kind of laughing as we're dragging the bait by the swordfish just going what if we actually get hooked up and what if well, yeah <laughs> yeah what if yeah so um just co- concentrating for a minute on the tuna club the tuna club avalon tuna club uh, um oldest oldest club in 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 america is that it's, right it's the oldest fishing club in the world i believe sure. it was the very first of the of the old time saltwater fishing clubs and uh the first tuna the first swordfish and the first marlin caught on rod and reel were caught at the avalon tuna club wow and what what was really significant about dave pfeiffer's fish on on the 24 thread linen was that was the 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 largest bluefin tuna weighed in at the tuna club on on regulation tuna club tackle which is you know, pre-war rod, reel, and linen line. It was the largest one weighed since uh, I want to say 1903. Incredible! So that's the second, the second biggest bluefin ever caught in the club 
on antique tackle. That's incredible. That's amazing. So it was a pretty significant That's a milestone. Very, yeah, so he's got a, a plaque on the wall coming. Yeah, he's going to have some badges from that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As no. if he needs more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's an amazing angler. As you yeah. know, you fish a lot with him. I fish with him, too. He's just a, he's a, he's a phenomenal angler. Yeah, but we were blessed. I mean, we hooked the right fish at the right time and had the right angler on the rod and the tackle held together. I mean, we just literally thought we're going to set the hook and Everything's just going to come apart at the seams. <laughs> yeah, but you fished uh, real tackle too, like modern tackle. I guess not that that's not real tackle, but you fish modern tackle, and you really, you really had some great days on that big bluefin this summer. Huh? We did, Pete. We 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 put a lot of effort into it. Primarily, our biggest effort was catching the bait, and we spent many many nights all night trying to catch three, four, half a dozen live flying fish. Yeah, and that was kind of our deal was was the flying fish. If we could get them out there and, and they were alive. Or if we could get live squid out there, we we really concentrated on that and and did very very well on the fly. Put your long nights in, lots of well, it's all nighters. I mean, we yeah. we would leave, uh, we'd get the boat out of the slip at six in the evening and we'd go to Catalina, and some some nights we'd spend till you know five six in the morning to get six flying fish. Isn't that crazy? How you know you're talking antique tackle and you're talking about the tuna club at Avalon and they did that back in the day, you know. Yeah. And it's funny how we've not regressed. I mean, we've pro, you know gone forward, but but using the flying fish like they did back in the day. Yeah, and and you know now that we've used them and we've had bites on them, I get it. I see why they used them back in the day. There's no better bait. Yeah. For those big bluefin, there's no and they, you know, you guys know you've been out there. They just lose their mind when they see that flying fish on the surface. Especially a live one. Especially a live one. Or you know we had this technique that we're using to rig them where we're tying the wings forward and. I kind of developed it over the season, different ways to use them, and some of the bites we had were spectacular. We didn't necessarily get the fish every time, but we had some bites that were insane. Wow. So it was uh, a lot of it was just a lot of hard effort to have the right bait, have the right tackle. We always have pretty good crews on the boat, and, and uh, my brother, who who runs the boat most of the time, has got tremendous fish sense. We, we uh, A couple times, everybody else was going right, and we'd go left, and fish. we fished really shallow at Clemente a lot. We actually lost one of our biggest fish this year. We broke it off in the bottom. In the bottom? That's in, crazy. In 180 feet of water. Wow. And we saw the fish. It was a 300-pound fish. Oh, my. And it got us down and, and got us in a rock or bull kelp or something and broke it off. Get, getting rocked by a bluefin. By a bluefin. <laughs> a 300-pounder, no less, right? Yeah. But my, my point is we, we spent a lot of time away from the crowd, and, and a lot of it was in um, less than 50 fathoms. And we'd find those big fish in there in less than 50 fathoms looking for flying fish. That's crazy. Right Just in, the, in there on the feeding pattern. Right in the shrimp buoys. Wow. Right up in there in the shrimp buoys. Unma- amazing. And we would we would fish through those shrimp buoys, and the and the big ones were in there. And there weren't big groups of fish, I don't think. No big giant meter marks like you'd see out in the flatfall area, but uh, you know little groups of I don't know twos, threes, fives going through. But a lot of times those were the big bruisers. And they were hungry. And they were hungry. Yeah. They just don't pass that flyer out. Yeah. That's so cool. So a lot of a lot of great times out there. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Of course, you do a lot of fishing. Uh, you do bass fishing. You were bass fishing yesterday. Yeah. Trout fishing the week before. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, Do you have a, a passion for all of it, or is it is the one that really stands out? What What really makes Makes it click for you, Greg. Pete, I'm going to say what my dad used to tell me. His favorite fish to catch is whatever he was fishing for at the time. Yeah. It could be a great big bluegill, you know, at Lake Hodges under a bobber, or it could be a 12-pound bass at Lake Estate, or it could be a striped marlin at Catalina. It's just, I enjoy it all. I will say that uh, we we spend a lot of time in the Sierras. I love going up to the eastern Sierras. I've done it since I was four years old. And uh, my wife and I have really got into going up there and, and hiking into different lakes and fishing the different lakes up there that you can hike into. And I really love doing that. I could do that for weeks and never get tired of it. And you talk um, about peaceful, you know. I mean, I mean, oh, it's the best. It is a fishery, everything. I mean, you see deer and you know, yeah, ducks flying around, and just hardly anybody too. Yeah, we were we were hiked into one lake uh, last weekend. We were up there and we were watching a great big bald eagle, and he was flying around harassing the ducks, and we're catching rainbow trout, and just uh, it's hard to beat the beauty of yeah. that place. So I, I I love the eastern Sierras, and a lot of it just goes back to childhood experiences and. Uh, having done that for so many years, and it's just an awesome place. Yeah, but of course, you're, we know where where all that, that lies is coming back at AFCO Manufacturing. And, of course, AFCO now makes some of the finest gear for big game saltwater fishing. Are they are they moving more towards some freshwater trout fishing? Well, we're, we're not necessarily trout fishing, Pete, but, but what we've uh, 
we've really got into the whole bass market and the whole bass yeah. clothing market and even some other products other than just clothing, um, you know, gloves and a lot of specific gear. I'm actually working on a little live well bag thing now for the bass market. But this whole bass market, I mean, as Corey, as you know as well, there's so many guys that bass fish. And it's the, millions. The heartland of the country. Yeah. Every, yep. I mean, you drive through small towns and everybody's got a hundred thousand dollar Ranger bass boat parked in front of their trailer. But I mean, you mentioned that, Greg, though. But it's it's everything from farm ponds to Kentucky Lake to, you know, it's it's across the country, Canada to Mexico. Yeah. You know, yeah. And North America. And, and in that world, for whatever reason, it's kind of a little NASCAR like they they really look to the to the pros, whether it's KVD or Iconelli or whoever whoever their hero is in the bass world. They look at what that guy's wearing, and they want to look like him. They may not be able to fish like him, but they want to look like him. Yeah. So we've really, really kind of hit on that in our in our clothing line, and we of course make you know nice high end functional clothing. But in the bass market in particular, we're we're just hitting it out of the park right now with the whole bass clothing market, the performance shirts, the shorts, and you know, all the stuff you guys are familiar with that we sure. that we make. And now uh, youth and ladies has just exploded, and that's going nuts. No I mean, kidding. All the clothing we make, all kinds of clothing now for ladies, from performance shirts to hats to sun masks, shorts, outerwear, and then the youth clothing. So it's uh, it's it's been very exciting I mean, yeah. to see all that happen. What I noticed in it was amazing. What I noticed in South Florida, I think it's kind of a whole trend along the eastern seaboard. There, everybody wears t-shirts there, whether it be a performance t-shirt or a cotton t-shirt. Yes. They wear it out out at night. I mean, every guy I saw practically, we went out over to Key West one night, and everybody was wearing a T-shirt. Yeah, I'm wearing one of the AFCO button-up shirts, and I was like, oh, gee, I should have worn my AFCO T-shirt instead, <laughs> right? I was overdressed. Yeah. <laughs> well, as I often say, I mean, it's, it's uh, of course, our business is, is based on our hardware business is where the roots and where the, where the, the foundation of the whole company is in the hardware business, which yeah. is the side of the business that, that I'm most involved with. But like I've always told people, you know, not everybody needs a roller guide or a, or a big game fighting harness. Right. But everybody needs a T-shirt or a performance shirt. But one thing for sure that you made make that and make the finest that this, that got used a lot this year is like those 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 big game guides and the and the bent butts. People yes. People were on the bent butts this yeah, year. Yeah. Right? With all this all this heavy tackle has really been a bonanza for us because it's. Uh, all this big fish, I should say, because it requires heavier tackle. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the the big game tackle market was has been so up with all this big bluefin around. The guys are learning that, um, you know, if if you're into stand up fighting, you need the right pad and harness, and you need the right equipment and bent butt rods, and a lot of guys fishing the stuff out of the holder, like our little short bent butts and all that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, the when you have big bluefin around, people buy a lot of tackle that that is needed to catch that big fish. So it's been a been a fun deal. How do you know when to get into a harness, belt and harness, and when do you want to use a bent butt? What, what's kind of the parameters for that? So, Pete, here's our deal. On our boat this year, with so many big bluefin around, and, and we're not, you know, we're not fly line and sardines trying to catch a 50 pounder. We're right. fishing big baits trying to catch big fish, whether it's squid at night or flying fish under a kite or double trouble mackerel under a kite or whatever. For us, we would get our angler in the belt and harness immediately. Because these fish were so big, and we had fish we fought for hours. Pfeiffer was on his fish for, I think it was seven hours. Seven hours. Seven hours Crazy. Oh. on 50 Dacron. So we harness these guys up. We put the AFCO XH harness on them. They already have the belt. And we get them harnessed up immediately because otherwise, you know, if you wait and you try to use your arms to pull and you get bruised up from the butt of the rod and all that, once you're a couple hours in and you go, oh, I think I'll start now start using the harness, by that point you're already beat. A couple hours late. Yeah, it's too late. <laughs> yeah, right. So why not harness up? I mean, we glove up, harness up, get the angler all as, as rigged as he can be and as comfortable as he can be because you don't know if it's going to be a 100-pound fish or is it going to be a 400-pound fish. Yeah. Does every, when you when you're, know who the anglers are going to be, does everybody have their own harness set up, ready to go, so that you don't have to make adjustments and stuff like that? Yes. On our yeah. boat, everybody has their harness with their name on it because we have a range of sizes. You got Pfeiffer, who's kind of like small youth, youth, extra small size, yeah. <laughs> and then you got myself and others that are yeah. a little bigger. So no, we all have our own gear ready, ready to go. Our own gloves with you know everything's on standby with your names on it. Yeah, and, and we found that by doing that, we we um we we our opportunities to catch the big fish go way up when you're ready. When you're ready. So yeah. we we because when you're stuff. fumbling around, oh let's get this harness on and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a valuable time's lost and you can lose the fish. Right. 
Right. Line goes slack. Give them just that little edge that they need, and yeah. boom, gone. Yeah. 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 So we 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 were we did everything we could to be as prepared as we could be. So what AFCO belt and harness is your go-to for a big so bluefin? Our go-to on on almost every big fish we caught this year was uh, the Viarda belt, which is our big 20-inch wide, our biggest belt, you know, pad, fighting pack. Okay. The so it spreads one. the load out the best. Okay. And then the new XH harness was just money. That okay. thing works beautiful. It's comfortable. I mean, Fife was in that thing for seven hours. Uh, Dave Elm was on a fish for three hours. We had Bird on a fish for three hours. And different guests on the boat. We had guys on fish, you know, anywhere from two to seven hours, comfortable, not beat up. I mean, yeah, they were sweaty and hot and cramping and everything else. Sure. But you'd have never got there without the right pad. Yeah, hard. they're comfortable to go the distance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's do this. Let's give that big bluefin set up away. The Greg Stotesbury. The so I'll describe it again. So we're, we'll we'll do the uh, the Viarda belt, which the, is our biggest belt. That's a big, bigger yeah. than the Socorro. Bigger than the Socorro. Yeah, Viarda belt, and then the uh, the Max Force XH harness, which Max. is our sit-in style harness, but it's the extra heavy. It's twenty percent thicker. It's bigger. It's got the lumbar pad. It's perfect for those big blue fish. Okay. So and what? How does that differ from the Max Force? Well, the standard Max Force harness is is twenty percent smaller. Mm-hmm. It's the padding is not quite as thick in it. It's more of a fifty eighty you know, kind of a general duty harness that you take, whereas the XH is larger, it's thicker, it's got a bigger lumbar pad in it. It's um, just a lot more comfortable for really big fish and, you know, drag loads of 25 pounds and above. Wow. So that's a nice setup there. Yeah, it we're is. giving away. Yeah. No doubt about it. As you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. That sounds like an awesome giveaway. And if you want to get in on it, the Viarta belt and the uh, Max Force harness, you know, from Greg at uh, APCO, you give us a call, 858-457-1090 or 877-792-1090. We have an exciting two hours ahead of us. We'd like for you to join us. Give us a call. We're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. For over five decades, Lee Palm Sport Fishing has set the standard in long-range fishing that they pioneered long ago. The Red Rooster 3 sets a new standard of excellence. The Red Rooster 3 is one of the most modern, quiet, and fastest long-range vessels in the fleet. They have handpicked the finest crew to make your trip a memorable one. The Red Rooster 3 offers trips from 3 to 18 days and runs year-round to the best fishing spots on the planet. Ride the Red Rooster 3 once and you'll be back again. Call the Red Rooster 3 at 619-224-3850. 57 or see them on the web at redrooster3.com. The season is here. It's time to go fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. The hottest new reel for inshore or offshore fishing is the Shimano Tranks 300 and 400. With two gear ratios, power handle or paddle handle, the new Tranks fills the gap for small and powerful level wine reels. Everyone knows how great the Shimano Tranks 500 is, so now you have it all. Fisherman's Landing Tackle has the all-new Tranks models in stock and ready to fish. Visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego or on the web at saltwatertackle.com. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Our hard-working crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trips, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering great half-day and now three-quarter day open party trips. Book online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Yamaha's Why Wait for Spring Fall Sales Event is back. For a limited time, purchase an eligible new 2.5 to 115 horsepower four-stroke and get six years of warranty protection plus up to $500 in dealer credit. New 150 to 300 horsepower four-strokes come with six full years of warranty protection. Visit your local Yamaha Outboards dealer today. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Offer ends November 19, 2018. Subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. 36-month limited warranty and 36-month Yamaha extended service contract. Choice offered to Florida residents is a 36-month Yamaha limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. 
He's not just my fishing buddy. After 30 years, he's a brother, and I'd sure hate to lose him. His bass boat's got nothing to do with it. So I make sure both of us wear a life jacket. Save the ones you love, even if they don't own a fancy boat. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. Alaska's Katmai Lodge is a world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. You'll fish for all five species of Pacific salmon, king, sockeye, chum, coho, and on even years, pinks. Plus, trophy-sized rainbow trout, Arctic Grayling and Dolly Varden, both in the Alagnac and the nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's U.S. Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in. They are exceptional teachers and ensure you have days that are fish filled and fun with freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, there are fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon, as well as fresh, delicious meals prepared by their exceptional chef. Elevate your visit with a quick flyout trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world-renowned bear watching. For the best fishing adventure ever, visit katmai.com. That's K-A-T-M-A-I dot com. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. San Diego's sports leader. The home of ESPN Radio. The mighty 1090. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And, man, we're having a great time in here with Greg. And yeah, we are. Oh. Greg is such an amazing guest. And this guy is so fishy. And I know the guys that he fishes with. And you talk <laughs> about, they're all this way. They're, they're all of... just, like, we talked about, uh, how many hours did you put on that boat of yours this year? I, I Pete, I want to say 580. 580. Yeah. We, That's we, a lot of time on the water. We ran, and, and we're not a charter. Just, just this summer. Just this summer. Yeah. yeah. You guys spent a lot of time. We go hard. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you go hard. Yeah, I know. But that's why we have the that's boat. That's what you do. That's what we enjoy doing. Yeah, so. yeah. Flying Fish is a great boat. It's a uh, classic 33 Brigantine, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 33 Brigantine with uh, 5.9 Cummins. And it had the 250s, and now we're repowering the 315s. Oh, so boy. You're we'll going to have fly. A, a little more speed and burn a little more fuel. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right, though. You have to have a little fatter gas card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but a classic boat building the... Uh, in the in the seventies, right? This ours is a is a sixty six. Sixty six. Built built in Costa Mesa. Wow. And um, uh, hull designed by the same gentleman that designed the hull for uh, Crystal Liner uh-huh. and for Pacifica. Pacifica, yeah. And for Skipjack, and I think he did work for uh, Dittmar Donaldson. But uh, it's a it's a really great little thirty three by twelve foot boat. And you guys have put just amazing love into that thing to make it just a stellar platform. When it's a 1966 wood boat, you have to put a lot of love yeah. into Now, it. is the hull wood? Uh, it's fiberglass. It's fiberglass. Fiberglass, wood, yeah. yeah. But which there's a lot a key, of wood. Which yeah. is a key with that boat. It's, yeah. It was a yes. fiberglass hull. It's, it's a tank. It's yeah. an absolute tank. Yeah. But built, we, built like they used to build fiberglass Like they boats. used to build boats. Yeah. But like all old boats, it requires constant yep. love. Yep. Yeah, a lot. I know that program. And a, and a big credit card. <laughs> yeah, and a big credit card. I know yeah, that you program. know. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Very well. Yes, indeed. But I wouldn't have it any other way because there's nothing. There, there is no boat on the market today that can rival uh, a Brigantine or a Pacifica yeah. that 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 can fish Southern California the way they're we, the we two best. And, yeah. and you know, your boat and and my boat are they share a common lineage. A 33 Brigantine, your 36 Pacifica is a stretched 33. Uh huh. So yeah. it's the exact same hull. Uh, it's a Jerry Norick designed hull that's been stretched. They stretch it to make the 36 Pacifica, and then when they built the 41 and the 44 Pacifica, they built a different hull. But Jerry Norick is the is the common thread in marine marine architecture through all of those Costa Mesa, you know, from the fiberglass ghetto up there in Costa Mesa. That's where all those boats came from. Wow, incredible! But, but like you say, with an old boat like that uh, that comes along, uh, you got to put a lot of love into her. Yes. But, yeah. Let me ask you this: For your wife, have you put the Sea Keeper in there? Uh, <laughs> If I could afford a sea keeper, I would, and yeah. she would sure enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. I think Viv would really enjoy that yeah. for sure. Of course, Vivian, his wife, is sitting right next to us. She works at AFCO. She's one of the smiling faces that you probably talk to on the phone and see at AFCO in many places. So yeah. uh, very, uh, very, very, uh, it's an AFCO family. Yes. But yeah. she's radio shy. She doesn't want to talk. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's all good. But, you know, and speaking of AFCO, let's talk about Bill Shudd for a second, because that guy is just amazing. Of course, yesterday uh, was the CCA San Diego chapter uh, uh, banquet. Huge success at Hub Sea World. Great. All the guys, uh, I, I was unable to attend because I was flying back from Florida, but uh, I saw Harold Davis this morning. He was actually uh, staying. He's on, he's on the road Polaris tomorrow morning, or to this morning, actually. He's getting on the road Polaris for the Davis Boats 10-day trip. And and uh, and he uh, he said it was a huge success, pretty much sold out. 
Lots of great raffle prizes, lots of funds raised, and Bill matched all those funds. AFCO did. That's awesome. Yeah, which nobody else in the industry does what AFCO does to save our fisheries. You know, there there, there are very few companies, Pete. I mean, I know, I know Shimano does a lot. Yes. Uh, I know Costa does a lot. Yeah. There's a few other companies in there that, that, that do quite a bit, but yeah. But just, uh, I mean, you're... Not much, you know, not many. I mean, Bill, others should, should do that. But but that, it's in APCO's DNA. I mean, it's actually in writing that you give back X amount. Yeah, it is. It is. And more than that, it just goes back to to, uh, to Milchhead, Bill's, Bill's dad, and what he kind of said as our company ethos years ago, that we're going to give a lot back. And we, we take a lot and we enjoy a lot, of, um, a lot of success from what we do in the fishing industry. And his thought was that we, as a business that's successful in an industry, we need to give back. And it was the same as he was with SeaWorld, which he founded when he uh, when he established the Hub SeaWorld Research Institute. It was to give back instead of just taking. Um, you you got to find ways to give back to the business. And Bill has embodied that like no other, in, yeah. in my opinion. And what he's done for the fishing community worldwide, really, not just here, in, but especially here in Southern California, because it's it's our backyard, all of our backyard. Um, the things he does for the fishing community just never end. Yeah, he's quietly involved in, in many, many things. You know, he's an IGFA trustee, and he's involved on a national level with all kinds of fisheries policy stuff that goes on. And then, of course, you know, locally with CCA, which he's really got his heart into and put a lot of time into. He's he's uh, very devoted to all that. I, Where does I he get all it. the energy? <laughs> I mean, That's a great question. And, and the time, you know, he's he, he is so generous with his time. That's what always amazes me about Bill is, I mean, I see him at these board of directors meetings. I see him at all these events. And, and then he runs a major corporation, AFCO. Yeah. I mean, how does he do it? Bill goes at a speed that most people would be surprised at. And, and even as he's gotten older, because none of us are getting any younger, but he, he, he's able to go at a speed that most people couldn't, couldn't match. Yeah. He just doesn't slow down. Yeah. And when he's at work, he's got his head down going 100 miles an hour all day long every day. Yeah. And still is in the office every day. And he's just one of those guys that can do that. Yeah. And you, Pete, you and I, we know people that are like that yes bill's one of them yes and uh and and he's and he's a bulldog when he gets something on his plate that he wants to get taken care of it's going to get done no matter what his dad was the same way yeah and uh but they're they're very much uh very dedicated to to the important stuff which is the giving back to the to the marine resources, the marine resources. And conservation. that's so cool hats off to bill he's and and yes y- you guys at afco because everybody that works at afco is part of that program Absolutely. You guys all give back. Yes. Yeah. So. Thanks, Pete. Really cool deal. Hey, let's go south down to Rancho Leonero. Talk to our buddy John Island. Buenos dias, John. Good morning, Peter. Hello, Corey. Hi, Greg. Morning, John. Good morning. Well, we're getting we have beautiful weather down here. Gosh, it's just uh, chin clear water, flat as it can be, no wind, uh, clear skies. Uh, water temp's still 81, 83. It's cooling off a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's it's just a... Really, really beautiful weather. Really enjoying it. Not much. Uh, we're having sending out. You know, we're starting to slow down. We close the first of December, and uh, so we're sending out two to four boats a day, and and uh, catching a real variety. To be honest with you, they're catching a few t- tuna and a few dorado every day, and they're, they're, most of the boats are staying inside, uh, fishing inshore. A lot of pargo, amberjack around. Some uh, big rooster fish still for this time of year. And the boats that are wandering outside, they've got a 50-50 chance of running into porpoise, uh, holding some pretty good-sized tuna. They've uh, they've got into a couple of they they feel that you know two three hundred pounders <laughs> that they've farmed. They uh, they're boating um, you know some thirty forty pounders, but uh, there's about a 50-50 chance outside. And then they're rolling inside if they're having no luck. And a lot of sailfish around, a lot of sailfish on the banks inside, and uh, and boats targeting. Um, Bill Fisher catching mostly sails, and they'll they'll pick up one or two in a day if they're targeting them. It's uh it's it's uh, slowing down now. You know we're getting, we're winding down for the season. And then, yeah. But it's gosh, it's beautiful. Hey John, beautiful. normally when we have these big Santa Ana conditions like this, the north wind blows, but that's not the case this week. Huh? Yeah, no, no, that wasn't the case. It's nice and flat. Yeah, I've been watching the news. Gosh, with all the fires and all that yeah. sad, sad Hearts stuff. Hearts out to them for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, no, we we have for some reason it's a different Santa Ana or whatever. Normally. When the Santa Anas are blowing, it does it just bend trees right down the Gulf and yeah. right right into the Cortez, but not this time. Not the case for sure. Well, no. hey, um, John, you know, a lot of people have been asking uh, me about where's Rock Cod Rick been? 
and um, you know, I'm, I'm, and I want to have to talk to about this because you've been associated with the show as long as anybody has, for 26, 27 years, and and uh, known uh, Rock Cod Rick's dad. We call him with affectionately Richard the Passing, co- yes. Codfather. Uh, Richard uh, Max have passed away. Um, oh, it was, it's been about a week and a half ago now, and uh, and uh, his dad uh, he lost a very gallant fight with cancer. Um, and he worked. He he fought it, fought it right up to the bitter end, and and uh, unfortunately um, succumbed to cancer about a week and a half ago. And the family, of course, is devastated. Rich, uh, Rock, right. Codfather Richard was a, a leader of his family, and uh, his his wife Joan and and Calico Carly, as we affectionately call him, and Rock Cod Rick, uh, we called uh, his dad the Codfather, obviously because of uh, because of uh, Rock Cod Rick. But uh, such a great guy and. The thing that that I remember so much is about when Rick was 14 years old and he used to come into the studio. His dad used to drive him into the studio every Saturday and Sunday at six, at five. Well, that was when we were on six to eight a.m. and and he, this guy worked, you know, full time in the construction business uh, all week. Got up early and then on the on Saturday and Sunday as a dedication to his kid would drive him in at o dark thirty in the morning. And be here every Saturday and Sunday until I think until Rick was like 18 years old, really. So that was like four years of driving him in and out there. And then of such course, a, such a great family. Yes, you know, such a great family and so supportive. Uh, Richard was a good friend. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be missed, and I know it's hit Rick hard. Yep. But you know, yeah. Gosh, but I, you know, they're so close, and I remember, I remember that. I remember them bringing him in every morning, and uh, yeah, that was the show was six yeah. to eight back then. And, and then e- even when Rick started driving himself to the studio, Codfather was such a part of our family here that that he he used to come in, just hang out, you know, and be there. But uh, no, he'll be very, there. very miss miss that guy a lot. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. And, and sad condolences stuff. for my, sure. My heart goes the, out to Rick and the family too. Yep. Yeah, in a big way. I know. Yeah, no mark. doubt. But Ricky's back at work at Fisherman's Landing, and yeah. at Fisherman's Landing Tackle, and he'll be back here uh, next Saturday and Sunday. He tells me, and uh, and want to thank Corey for all his support and and doing such a great job for backing us up. So yeah, thank you, Peter. I mean, that's yeah. you know our hearts go out to Rick, like you said. But yeah. you know, I'm stoked to be here and stoked to help out, yeah. and and we'll be happy to have Rick back yeah. next week for sure. No doubt about it. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, a sad, sad thing for our Let's Talk Hookup family, the Codfather. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. His, he'll, he will be missed. Yep, we Richard. won't forget that was, guy. He was a good friend for sure. I miss his time down at the ranch with Rick. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. special and for me, too. And my, my heart goes out to the family and, and Rick in particular. I know it got him. Yeah, i, I got to tell a funny anecdote about the Codfather. He was so, he's one of those guys that's got to be early at the airport. He's got to be like, you know, one of those guys, maybe three hours, two hours early at the airport. I am not that guy, right? I like, I want to shave off every second I can. I am, you know, I'm respectful of what they need at the airlines, but I, I kind of cut it as close as possible. So, uh, one year, um, we were going down the Rancho Leonero. He and I were flying. Rick had to stay in work, and Codfather and I were flying down the Rancho Leonero. And he's going. I said, "Don't worry, we're, we got we we have a 10:30 flight, and I'm going to do the show, and I'll come pick you up, and we'll roll into roll into the airport, and we'll be fine. It, we'll, we'll, no worries." And so I, I pick him up, and 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 we roll into the airport, and it's about. 57 minutes before our flight was leaving, we walked up to the counter, and, the, and, and, and Richard was really nervous now. I mind you, he's like, I think we should get there. I think you should leave the show early, Pete, and come. It's like, nah, don't worry about it, Richard. We'll be fine. So I, they sold I, your seats. So, so they sold, sold our seats because we didn't check in internationally for an hour ahead. Now Alaska wants you to check in. They're real stringent on that hour now. But it was like even checking in online. They want you at the counter an hour ahead. But uh, they gave away our seats, so we didn't get to go to Rancho Leonero until the next day. And so Ricky always, like, like chastises me and says, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Pete. Now we have to get to the airport three hours ahead <laughs> because, because of what you did to me there. But, story. But, but, yeah, but uh, God, I'll never forget. I was like, so, I was like, so sorry, God, God, Father, I'm really sorry. I was wrong, man. I blew it. And, and we, the worst part is we missed the day at Rancho Leonero, right? 
Well, he like I say, he, we spent a lot of good times. We had a lot yeah. of good times. A lot of big rooster fish, old Richard. Oh Canada. yeah, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, you go. You, we're actually they're archived on our website. There, you can you can go back through and look. And and he and Rick really swayed them. I mean, big ones, eighty eighty ninety pounders. They were yeah. famous for catching them. For sure, having for good sure. times. He's he's going to be missed. No, he, we he miss really him. We miss him a whole bunch uh, for sure. I know the family does too. Well, so well, I hope I hope Rick's hanging in there. Yeah, he is. He's he's uh, you know it's a recovery period, and a lot of us have been through it, and it's it's, it's a lot of easy things. So. Hey, I could think of no better remedy than for Pete or uh, Rick to come down for a few days. Yeah, John, get down to Rancho Lino. Yeah. So how do we do that if we want to come down to Rancho Lino? Well, he knows, but it's 800-646-2252, or uh, check out our website, ranchalanero.com, and uh, and tell him. I'll, I'll call him myself. He needs to come down. If he can break away, um, we'd love to have him. There you go. Thanksgiving at the ranch. What an idea. Think, yeah, huh? and we've got lots of turkeys <laughs> down there, that's for sure. There you go. We do a real American Thanksgiving. Oh, that's cool. All right, John, thanks a lot for that, and we will talk to you next Saturday. Or next sure Sunday, will. excuse me. Next Sunday, I'm all messed me. up here. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> Appreciate the call this morning. All right. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and jump into those phones. They're jam-packed. They want to talk to Greg Stotesbury from AFCO, so let's do it. Let's do it, Pete. We're going to talk to Chuck. Chuck's calling from Dana Point. Good morning, and welcome to the show this morning, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. God bless the Godfather. Hey, you mm-hmm. know... These pictures, I was looking at that linen picture you guys had. I was like double taking because I always look at the gear. No way. They just put that in for the picture. And I read the article. How cool that is. But one thing I look at the archives, I love looking at all those old pictures. But they used to slay these fish in three-piece wool suits. They really wore yes. those? Yeah. I, know, I it's like, wow. I see those pictures of the of the guys in their wool suits and the ladies in their long black dresses and that was July mm-hmm. and August in Catalina, and you guys know how warm it gets in yeah. Avalon and Catalina. That's a mystery to me. I, Chuck, I have no idea how you fight that fish in a wool suit with a tie <laughs> and, and yeah. boots. And but to, You know, Chuck, you yeah. bring up a good point. What's the deal, Greg? You guys want to be traditionalists. Why not go all the way, man? Get your wool suit out. Huh? <laughs> I like uh, it. What? Just a whole line of clothing. <laughs> yeah, I uh, Get a build a new of... wool suit, right? Not happening, man. I wear as little clothes as I can yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I think I'll go with the yeah, Avco stuff. The parking lot sale. But that is, a, that is a great question, and I look at those old pictures, and I think exactly the same thing. I, was that a different place back in 1900? Did it not get as hot yeah. as it does there now? And, and you know what? Truly, I mean, you look at it, and, and back then it was a gentleman's style of fishing. I mean, it yeah. took... That kind of money to go do what we're doing today, you know. And those guys were, you know, a lot of the tuna club guys lived all over the country. They lived in Chicago, of course, in L.A. and New York, and they would fly in or, or come in by train or whatever, uh, I guess by train back in those days, and, and come over there and fish out of these, you know, 20-foot or less little little either rowboats or one-lunger gas-motored boats and be out there all day. A lot of times they fight those fish for hours and hours and break them off. Wow. The loss rate back then was gigantic. Wow. But how do you do that in a wool suit? Maybe they changed outfits when they got in. Maybe. Maybe they, maybe they, they took the coat off. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No photographs while the coat's off, though, great, right? Great question. It's sure a mystery yeah. to me as well. A- indeed. And and why, what was the big attraction? I mean, there's so there's so much great fishing across the, the country there, East Coast as West Coast. What was the attraction to come all the way out west? It was kind of like the new frontier, really. Well, it was, it was the... It was the place to go if you wanted to catch a giant horse mackerel, which they called them back then, or leaping tuna. It was the very first place. A horse? What? What was a horse? Horse mackerel, mackerel. was it? Was a giant tuna? That's what they called them. That's wow. what they okay. called them. A horse? Yeah, or mackerel? a leaping tuna? A leaping, leaping tuna. tuna. Yeah, but that was the deal back in the day. It was. Um, it's hard for me to draw an immediate comparison, but if you were a wealthy sportsman, outdoorsman, and you lived anywhere in the country, and you heard the news about these guys doing battle with these giant leaping tuna and fighting them for hours, that was like a big deal. Wow. I mean, you had people like, you know, George Patton and Stan Laurel and, and Churchill himself. All these guys came out to the tuna club specifically to hire a boatman like Farnsworth or or Mexican Joe or one of the famous boatmen of the day to take you out in a skiff in front of Avalon Bay and pull around a flying fish and try to hook one of these giant bluefin so you could come in and you know, stand there in your black suit and beat your chest and say, I, yeah. I caught a giant leaping tuna. And, and that's what they used to do. They used to f- troll around frozen flying fish, right? They, they would they would catch flying fish. Yep, they'd catch, they had boys that go out and catch the bait in the morning. They'd catch flying fish, and they, they would either row with a rigged flying fish or they'd put a kite up and do a combination of both rowing and slow trolling with a flying fish. 
And that's that was the primary technique. Isn't it amazing the way it comes back around, huh? Oh, it's so incredible. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid uh, fishing marlin out of San Diego in the San Diego Marlin Club, we used to have, you, you could go down the street and buy frozen flying fish, and that's what you'd put out on the outriggers. Yes. What happened to that? <laughs> I, you know, it still works. It's yeah. just like a lot of things in fishing. Guys find what they think is the new, the next new best thing. Yeah. But you know, you can, you know, you can still go to the San Diego lakes today and throw a, a nine-inch brown DeLong worm with a black stripe. I guarantee you'll get a bite on it. Hey, Bill, <laughs> Bill Murph. Bill Murph was no joke. Right? Yeah, yeah, he knew. no doubt. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for the call. That was a good one. All right. Hey, when we come back and let's talk hookup. Do we want to take a call? No, we're going to We're going to go to break. I'm sorry. That's my mistake. Hey, when we come back, we're going to have more from Greg. More on Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Hello, Mom. Pete here to tell you about our friends Jim and Mary and their incredible crew at Poway Valley Collision. I hear it all the time. Hey, I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, and you were right. Mentioned you guys, and they gave us the VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. We know you may not need them now, but when accidents happen, it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. And I'm not fooling. Our listeners can save hundreds. Hundreds of dollars on your car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, and Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. I had my car repaired at Poway Valley Collision, and the job was perfect. So get your vehicle fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. Fifth Avenue Insurance has a new name. It's Snap Insurance, still providing anglers and boaters with the best in boat insurance and the lowest rates. The experts at Snap Insurance will make sure your boat and property are covered right. Traveling to Mexico? Snap has you covered. You can even work with your agent to wrap your home and auto with your boat policy to save even more. Call them for advice on your current boat policy or any of your insurance needs. Snap Insurance, 800-527-6617 or snapins.com. That's S-N-A-P-P-I-N. Hey, it's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. You heard Greg Stotesbury talking about it. What do you use on those big blue things? Palica 22 speed. Palica 22 speed. And that reel. 80 pound Power Pro. 80 pound Power Pro. That reel and the Power Pro. What a dynamic, amazing uh, reel that is. It's the most comfortable combination, especially when you put it with one of the Therese rods. I don't know the exact model, but that six and a half foot. Uh, Heavy rod that we use with the with the the, the double XH. Yeah, it's yeah. just a phenomenal rod for those oh, big yeah. bluefin, and it doesn't beat the angler up. It's, it's so lightweight, it's comfortable to fish with. Yeah, yeah. and that's the th- that's the thing. Shimano is designing, and a lot of that goes back to guys like yourself and Dave Pfeiffer, especially because they design tackle that they want to use. Yes, indeed. And, and these guys fish all the time, and that's what they like to fish for. They have a they like big fish. Yeah. And if you like big fish, Talica 22 speed has to be in your arsenal uh, along with the Therese rod. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And that power thing holds pro. plenty of 80 pound power pro to handle anything that swims out there. Yeah. So check it out at your local Shimano dealer, the Talica Therese combo. It's big, it's comfortable, and she is beautiful. The -the state-of-the-art, long-range sport fishing vessel, the Independence. Veteran captains Mark Paisano and Paul Strasser built this incredible 112-foot vessel with the most modern technology and luxurious comfort available. Captain Jeff Dubois has helped make the Independence a top-notch operation. Call Independence Sport Fishing at 619-226-6006 or check the availability on spring, summer, and fall trips now at independentsportfishing.com. All right. All right. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Having a great time in the studio with Greg and just so much going on. And, hey, the Catch Report is sponsored by Fish Pros of Fishman's Processing in San Diego. Not only do they offer the best processing for your trip when they return to San Diego landings, they now have Fish Pros to market. You can purchase fresh fish, smoked jerky fish, and their famous tuna burgers at their convenient Liberty Station location. Fish Pros have also become famous for their line of Smoked spices, rubs, and salts, which I absolutely love. I used last night. As well as smoked cheese. Pick them up at their Liberty Station location or order online at Fisherman's at uh, Fisherman'sProcessing.com. Yeah, great online store that they have there for those spices and rubs and the other uh, things. So check it out, Fisherman'sProcessing.com. Let's start at Dan or Sport Fishing Captain Brian Willie. What's up, Willie? Hey, good morning, guys. What's happening good morning. in there? Good stuff, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Gosh, how's this weather? 
Holy smokes. Crazy. Been Too nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Too nice. Right? I know. Gorgeous water along our stretch of the beach up here, too, man. 66 to 67. It was funny. We were anchored up in 50 feet of water yesterday. You could see the bottom just like it was, you know, right there. It's just beautiful. But again, here for us, you know, this Bonita has been keeping things interesting uh, on our trips. You know, a couple days this week, that fish bit real well for us. Uh, sonar schools and uh, jig stops is what's uh, been getting the boat stopped for us. And, you know, honestly, we really can't ask for a better half-day fish. You know, it's perfect. That bonita pulls hard. It's fun to catch. And, you know, if you do it right, it's really good on the table. So, you know, the fly line baits and the uh, Colt Sniper jigs caught plenty of fish. And, you know, we're still seeing a little bit of that skipjack, too, out a little bit further. Maybe five miles from our harbor, there was some good spots that stuff up yesterday. It's It's been on its own bait, so it's been hard to catch. Uh, Sam Mateo Boat had a handful of those fish in his count yesterday. But just good stuff to see for November. Down in the deeper water, when we catch our rockfish, that's been pretty good, too. You know, standard deal, double dropper loops, squid and sardine, catching plenty of fish. And, again, that Colt Sniper have been catching some nice reds and Boccaccio in that zone. The Fury, he just got back this morning from his uh, final trip of his season, his day and a half. He had the, the boat down there in that zone where they've been catching that bluefin. Good good mixed grade of fish, that 20 to 60-pound stuff on the fly line baits and a couple fish on the deep water jigs. But a good way for him to end his season, uh, he ended up with 46 fish for his 23 guys. So he went out went out in style there. And then also we have our halibut derby going. You know, we're slowly adding names to that derby leaderboard. I think we got nine fish on that leaderboard right now. Remember, it holds 25 spots. And uh, the top fish right now is that 25-pounder that's been on there for they're just over a week now. You know, obviously that's a nice fish, but uh, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that that fish is going to get bumped out of there as we uh, roll through the winter months here soon enough. So. That's what we got going on up here at Dana Wharf. If you guys want to hop on a trip, certainly uh, give us a call. The phone number here, 949-496-5794. Of course, uh, check us on the web, too, danawharf.com. And then uh, click the link there, the Dana Wharf link right there on the Let's Talk Hookup page. That will take you over to our online booking, and you guys can use the code Dana, D-A-N-A, and that will save you 25% on one of our half or three-quarter day trips. Save you a few bucks this time of year. What's the code again? Dana, D-A-N-A. All right, D-A-N-A. New code there. D-A-N-A saves you a lot of money on a half and three-quarter day trip there. You can't beat it, actually. Yeah. All right, very good. So we're looking forward to a good week. And, man, this water, I tell you, you know, Marlin guy's been seeing a little bit of fish, and I'll just kind of throw that out there to those guys. (laughs) Yeah. There's been some quick feeders, some spots. I know the real fun, they saw two fish inside of three miles yesterday. So What? Wow! Something for those wow! Guys. No, great yeah, perked hey. up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> perked so up a little that's bit. Been, yeah, that's been for yeah a good week. We've been seeing that fish in there a week and a half. So, interesting. Anyways, yeah, throw that out. Late there. November, right, guys, or mid November. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. thanks a lot, Captain Brian Willie, Dana Wars Sport Fishing. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Hey, those All were right, guys. those were actually some good tidbits from uh, Brian Willie at Dana Point. Let's go down to Jeff Flowers down to Sandra Sport Fishing. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Great. Good. Good. <clears throat> Sorry, a little bit. Uh, Scratchy throated this morning. Uh, slept with the window open and got a little cold blaster last night. Oh. But uh, we got a we got a great report from uh, from the island down at Sandro Sport Fishing. Uh, it, our last trip of the season is down there right now, and uh, the guys have just got back. Uh, they had some beautiful weather, uh, very flat, very warm, um, perfect ponga fishing weather, and we got a lot of people down there now that are catching their personal best. So we've got uh, white sea bass. We had Tim with a 66, the guy uh, Jason R., a lot of people know him, uh, 33-pound white sea bass, Gonzo with a 30. We had a guy, Carl, with a personal best yellowtail, a 38. And we had a handful of Wahoo from Bill at uh, 56, Fritz at uh, 48, and John at 42. So the fish are biting. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend our season. Again? Through through December. Wow. We're going to. For this year, we're 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 closed after this trip's coming back for this year. We gotta we gotta kind of regroup and and make sure we got our good game on for next year. But we're gonna take it through December, and we're gonna make it available for all those anglers out of there that want to go down catch these big fish with great weather, and give everybody an opportunity to get that in going into winter. Wow, fantastic! Well, if somebody wants to come down to Sedro Sport Fishing, how do we do that? Get old to Rosie. She's gonna be putting together the final schedule for next season. You can reach her on her cell phone at 619-772-7570, and um, uh, she'll be able to take care of that. You can go online, take a look at the reservation list, see what's available. But uh, places, uh, spots are going fast, but now we opened up the, 
last two months of the season for next year. Get in there while you can. There you go. All right, Jeff, appreciate that report. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Take care. All right. Yeah, and going from Cedros Island to uh, Gundy Gunnarsson, a surf guru. We talked about you a few times yesterday. Gundy, good morning. What did I do wrong? Oh, you did everything right, actually. We had uh, <laughs> Bill Varney in studio and talking nothing oh, but right. yeah, nothing but surf fishing and good times. Yeah, cool deal. You know, like uh, what I'm saying to the guys right now, you don't look at the calendar. You look at the water temperature, you know, and, and – uh, you know, the consistency of summer isn't there, but in turns we had some good fishing this week, some surprisingly good fishing. I'll get, I'll start up North Hook Line Sinker reported good leopard shark bite, and really the leopard shark's been on the bite up and down the coast. They were catching them at Galita, fresh mackerel taken off the pier, and then fished on the big rig was the top bait there. Incoming tide has been best, fish to 35 inches, so those some nice Leopard sharks, we don't talk about those guys very often. Several legal halibut, we're also taking off East Beach on Lucky Craft. Still some stretches of 67-degree water up there, and they had a trigger fish uh, reported taken this week up there. So that's the kind of conditions we have. No report from Wiley's. The perch derby was canceled. Uh, Ginny had to evacuate the shop, so we... We got our prayers and our, our wishes with those folks up there. That's a tough situation. Just fishing reported a few Corbina were taken uh, along Torrance Beach. A few of the guys still going after it. Fresh mussel was the top base. And then the Benita kind of showing up a little bit off the pier, but they've been hanging outside. You know, normally in November you see them in the harbor off the pier, the whole deal, but they're still hanging outside. That might be a late bloomer. Normally, uh, uh, you know, this Benita, it's just a matter of, the water's really clean inside, and there's bait inside. And if you have those two elements, they'll come in. We haven't really seen that. Big Fish reported uh, the Benita did come inside around the L.A. Harbor area, Seal Beach Pier and Jetty, San Gabriel River, Channel, Bolsa Chica Inlet. Most of the fish, two to four pounds. Crocodiles, cats, masters working good. Lots of short halibut moving in the shallow shoreline drive there. Catch some tackle reported a handful of striped bass taken off off of a river jetties there on crocodiles. I think the big fish was eight pounds or something like that. Few bonita on the piers there, but still no consistency. Hogan's reported the worm bite has been hot along Capo Bay there. Lug worms, blood worms scored some big croaker, yellowfin spots, and real good numbers there, tell me. Really good action. A few bark perch, still a few corbina for those guys. Doheny below the pier, State Park best spots. Pacific Coast reported. And I was calling this somewhere along the line, but a hot Corbina bite this week. They still have the warm water in there. The surf conditions were really good this week, and anglers were reporting four to five fish in a session, which is terrific. Best fish, three-pound class. Blood worms were the key to getting a bite there. Sand crabs, hard to find them. Blue water, finally, reported good week of Corbina fishing. Lug worms, fresh mussel working for those guys. And then the water temps, like I said, still in the, six, the, the mid-60s, so... Still hanging on, and, uh, you know, it's worth grabbing the rod and going down there and seeing what's happening. No kidding, Gundy. Good, good oh. fishing there. And, uh, like I say, it's summer in November right here in Southern California. <laughs> got to love it. Hey, Gundy Gunderson, surf guru extraordinaire. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Don't ask why. Just fish. Just fish. Yeah. All right. Thank I like you, it. Appreciate all you do. Have it's a good week, you guys. You Thank you. Well, that's definitely good stuff. And today's report sponsored by uh, Bill Varney's 219... 219- 2019 CCA Sport Fishing Tide Calendar, and you can get it in uh, local shops or uh, down at the landings. This year's calendar has great pictures, tides, moon phases, uh, important dates, fishing tips, and so much more. In addition, the back of the calendar has a unique number, and each month here on the show, we're going to announce a winner. And uh, by purchasing the calendar, you're supporting CCA. Yeah. Something good to get. We talked about it yesterday on the show. Yeah. So, so there you go. The CCA Bill Varney cal- calendar. Get it at your local tackle store or at the surffishtackle.com. Phones are packed. They want to talk to Greg. Only one line open if you want to get through. 877-792-1090. Let's go ahead and jump into the phones. Let's do it, Pete. Let's talk to Mo. And Mo's calling from Vista. Good morning, Mo. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Yeah, Mike Donald says Rick family there and uh, I got a couple questions uh, one for Greg how do you catch your flying fish and uh, are you allowed to fish rockfish over at the Cortez and Tanner well I, <clears throat> on the flying fish there Mo you know the way we catch them is we of course catch them at night and uh, we catch them in the lee of the island either Clemente or Catalina mostly Catalina just because it's handier for us but um, 
uh, a lot of driving around in shallow water with a spotlight until we find one. And then when we find them, we keep one spotlight on the bridge and one spotlight in the cockpit. We keep the light on them, and a lot of times you can kind of steer them to the boat or you can back up to them. And if you do it carefully and they stay on the surface, then we have a long handle. I call it a butterfly net, but it's a long-handled monofilament shad net that we use to dip them. And it's a big hassle, and a lot of times the seal gets them. Most of the time the seal gets them before you do. What? Come yeah, on, really? Yeah. Yes. I'll shore like that. Oh, the seals, they see them instantly in the light, and they eat them. That's right silhouette. Now. They're just homing in on it. They home right in on it, just oh like a giant gosh. bluefin does. So you fight the seals for them, but... Um, we, we just, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of driving around in shallow water. It's a little bit gnarly because many times we're in 10 feet, 13 feet. Because, the, 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 you know, the, the flyers are in there spawning. So they go right up in on the beach. But a lot of times around the can dump at Catalina at the east end, we get them there. Um, but the seals, the seals torture us. Yeah. And, you're, you know, it's the middle of the night. You're tired. You know every single one's a potential bluefin bite. And just as you're getting ready to get in with the net, Bobo comes up and eats him off the surface. Oh, my God. How, how long will they last in your bait tank live? So they usually live for about 8 to 12 hours if you're lucky. If you're lucky. And one of the things we found is as soon as they die, put them in a Ziploc and put them on ice. Because uh-huh. if you let them go to the bottom of the tank, the little fleas, the sea fleas that are in your bait tank, will eat the membrane out of the wings, uh-huh. and then they're not as oh, attractive. Oh, that's the first thing to go. Yes, they eat that membrane out of the wings. And then when you spread the wings... The profile of the flying fish doesn't look right, and the tuna—I uh-huh. don't think the tuna see it as well because all that membrane gets eaten away, and it just doesn't show as well on the surface. Yeah. The other thing we found is is frozen works almost as good as fresh dead. Okay. So but, we, but, it doesn't but, matter but as long for, as you set it up right, as long as you rig them properly. Yeah. And and the wings still have to be in perfect shape. I mean, frozen and the wings want to be in perfect shape. Yeah, crazy. And, and, yeah. and spread out. It's hard work, though. It's catching the flying fish is a lot of work. It's way more work than most people will want to go through, and it's one of the advantages we had is we were willing to do the work. Yeah. But it was a lot of driving the boat around in very shallow water, a lot of frustration. And very dangerous, too, for your boat well, yeah. to be in that water. Yeah. I mean, Michael knows the territory really well, but, yeah, there were several times, you know, you're looking down and you're looking at the bottom. Yeah. And the boat drafts three feet, and you're only in 11 feet of water. Yeah. So I mean, watch you, out. I, I just say if you're going to do it, be very, very careful. Yeah. Uh, better yet, get someone else to do it for you and buy the frying, flying fish frozen. Yes. And then take them out. Learn how to rig them and right. take them out. Yeah, that's my program. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Yeah, man. We're learning so much this morning. I love having Greg in here. I love learning. And you want to be a part of it, 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. We're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hookup. More with Greg. Same rig and set up. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero is very family-oriented. People have brought their children down, and now they're bringing their children. It's not unusual to have three generations of family at the hotel. Grandpa, dad, and uh, normally sons, sometimes daughters. The families come back year after year, and it's a safe place for the kids. It's small, it's intimate, right on the water, two miles of beachfront. The water's very shallow in front. There's no currents to speak of, no waves. We have child care, $10 a day for a babysitter. Security is high at Rancho Lanero. It's really unnecessary, but it adds up comfort level. And we really do encourage the families. It's a great place for family reunions, family get-togethers, weddings. We do it all. 1-800-646-2252. 646-Baja. And RanchoLanero.com. There's nowhere that I can think of to have the same atmosphere and the same experience that you get at Rancho Lanero. We love families. Quality is the name of the game at Seaforth Sport Fishing in Mission Bay. Free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, plus a great fleet. It's no wonder Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, El Gato Dos, Pride, Tribute, Tomahawk, Prowler, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth, Sea Watch, and San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing for charters or regular open party schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. 
FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. FishDope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com is for everyone, whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a sport boat. FishDope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have FishDope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use this special code to save $20 on a new FishDope.com membership. Check it out today. FishDope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. San Diego Sports Leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the mighty 1090. Yamaha's Why Wait for Spring Fall Sales Event is back. For a limited time, purchase an eligible new 2.5 to 115 horsepower four-stroke and get six years of warranty protection plus up to $500 in dealer credit. New 150 to 300 horsepower four-strokes come with six full years of warranty protection. Visit your local Yamaha Outboards dealer today. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Offer ends November 19th, 2018. Subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. 36-month limited warranty and 36-month Yamaha extended service contract. Choice offered to Florida residents is a 36-month Yamaha limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at buyfordnow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today. They'll be glad to hook you up. 38 years ago, my parents started Fastlane Sailing Center. They sold catamarans because they wanted to do what they loved and sell what they loved to do. They wanted to share their passion with others, share the stoke. I'm Hayden Lane, and over the last three decades, my parents have shared that passion with thousands of people. My brother, sister, and I among them. We grew up right there at the shop in Dana Landing Marina in Mission Bay, sailing on the bay, fishing off the docks, and later off the Hobie Mirage kayaks. We grew up surrounded by the water. Our shop was filled with tools that Hobie and other brands have made to enjoy on the water. And I use them all. I mean all of them. Wouldn't you? So when you come into the shop, you're not going to hear a salesperson trying to convince you to buy something. You're going to hear us bragging about how much fun we have on these toys and telling you to do the same. We test every product out there, and we only sell the best because we want to use the best. So check out our website at FastLaneKayaking.com or get on down to the shop in Dana Landing and find your next adventure. <laughs> 